Okay, so first things first, you need a fresh, giant bean curd sheet. This is, uh, this is about a pound, this is 14 ounces, so not exactly a pound, but close to a pound. So I saw the video where Emmy made, made these vegan drumsticks out of bean curd sheets, the tofu skin, from woonhen.com, and, and, and I wanted to give it a try. Now, I didn't watch Emmy Made's video. Uh, I wanted to make my own, try it, and give my review of it, about how it tasted and react to it, and then also just kind of like, maybe at the end of this video, actually react to Emmy Made's trial and see how close we were in our comparisons. I thought that might be kind of fun. So stick around at the end of the video for that uh, review of, of me watching Emmy Made's video. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take these out of their package. Now bean curd sheets are huge. The fresh ones are massive. I've actually done a very similar recipe to this in the past uh, where I did what's called cha lua che. It's like a vegan pork using these bean skins. Uh, it's actually a made, like a traditional recipe, um, very old recipe that uses the bean curd skins. So I'm gonna fold this back up, but we're gonna be cutting these into long strips. Now the thing about bean curd skin is that it is very, you can see there's a lot of pieces that are kind of like broken here. Uh, so it's gonna fall apart a little bit. That's okay, but for the most part, you just want these long strips, and according to the recipe, it's about an inch to inch and a half wide. So we're just gonna make a lot of those long strips. Okay, so at this point, we're just gonna take these strips, we're gonna add them into a large bowl, and then we're gonna cover them with water. Now, once we have them covered with water, all we're gonna do is just knead the strips together by hand, kind of like softening them up, almost like what you would do with kale. Now, that's what's in this recipe. I don't commonly do this step, and I'm kind of wondering uh, if that might be what's been missing in my soy skin recipes. I'm also going to leave a link to the original recipe, um, so if you want all of the instructions you know, for that, follow it along over at that original recipe. Um, I think it's definitely key that everybody clicks on that link to get give the original creator the credit that they deserve. So I know I talk about a lot of different oils in my recipes, but I don't really ever talk about what makes one oil better than the other. And after doing a little bit of research, that's when I found today's sponsor. Brightland oils are bottled fresh with absolutely no preservatives or fillers. Personally, I love using olive oils. I love what they can bring to a recipe and what they really can bring to a dish if you select the right olive oil, if it's good. And with Brightland, you know the exact types of olives and fruits used and the year of harvest of each product. Again, there's no fillers, it's all organic. Now I've already tried a few, but I recently got the Alive and Awake olive oils. Alive is smooth and nutty and it's perfect for like salads and dips, where the Awake is more robust and grassy. It's perfect for soups, breads, and pastas. And their Ardor, which is 100% chili olive oil. This is a little bit of toast, some vegan feta. Roll that over top. It's so good, it's so good. And their products are fully recyclable and they offer plastic-free shipping, which is awesome. So gang, try Brightland now and get 10% off when you use my code and click the link in the description below. Thanks Brightland for sponsoring today's video and uh, get me on my journey to some pretty awesome olive oil. So I'm really, really I'm really loving these. Uh, so at this point, what I'm gonna do is just a small bit at a time. I'm gonna pick some up and just squeeze out um, as much of this water. Not as much, but we're gonna squeeze out a decent amount of water. Uh, we wanna keep them kind of juicy, uh, but we also wanna give some room to, uh, uh, to be able to suck up some more flavor. So they still need to be moist, but get rid of a decent amount of that water. I'm gonna also kind of separate them make them a little bit easier to just kind of pick through so they're not knotted up. Now at this point, we're gonna mix together our seasoning mix for this. Now, I'm really excited because it includes a few of my favorites, absolute favorites. Number one ingredient, we're gonna be adding mushroom seasoning. You all know how much I love mushroom seasoning. Sugar, salt, ground pepper, five spice powder, cornstarch, and water. Now all we're gonna do is just add our little seasoning slurry to our mixture here, and then we're just gonna massage it in to make sure that everything is coated. I'm actually gonna dump some of this in here to kind of suck some of it up. Uh, so for my drumsticks, for my bones, in the past I used sugar cane, which is actually what the recipe's calling for, but lately I've been doing some things using um, lemongrass for the bone. It just comes out like a really good you know, bone handle texture. I recently did a video over on Live Kindly uh, where I made some ribs and I used lemongrass for the bone. That came out awesome. So I'm gonna cut about five or six inch 
long bones. Uh, we're only gonna be using the meatiest end of the stalk, so probably the lower third. Keep the upper end of your lemongrass for flavorings or any other recipe that you wanna use them in. Uh, you can make like a lemongrass broth or even like a lemongrass drink. So at this point, we're gonna make our binder. For this recipe, it's literally just cornstarch and water. So we're just gonna make a cornstarch slurry, and then we're gonna put these together. Uh, we're gonna portion these out according to the recipe. Uh, for this one, it's 80 grams. They're doing 80 gram portions. Okay, so I must be doing something right because we just landed on the perfect number, exactly what the recipe called for. We got 10 little piles of our soy skin. Let's wrap them on our drumstick. Now we're gonna take some of our super thick, which I'm not 100% sure how this works because this is thick. This is a thick cornstarch slurry. Now, yeah, I just added a touch more water just to kind of like thin this out a little bit because I mean, that was thick. Um, and now I feel like it's too thin. But what we wanna do is pick up one of our piles and then I'm going to kind of flatten out some of my strips because they're all folded up here. And we're just gonna start with a strip across the bottom, kind of tightly wrap it around the drumstick all the way up to the top here. And all we're gonna do is just kind of continually overlapping and wrapping this drumstick to form the shape of a chicken drumstick. I just don't know after, after all that massaging and mixing and all that, how, how the heck all of the uh, recipe creators stayed so um, so flat. Cause like now I just kind of have little bits. Now, once you have your drumsticks wrapped, we're just gonna go ahead real quick just with this first one. We're just gonna use a small piece of plastic wrap just to kind of create and form these drumsticks together. We're gonna twist the bottom of the drumstick then twist the top of the drumstick and then just kind of make sure that these are twisted tight, you know, holding on to another. Okay, so these were a little tough to wrap up. So I just made a few of them and then the rest of them I just kind of formed in the little hot dog looking things just to kind of try out. I get the, I get the method. I've, I've done this before where you just kind of compress soy skin together and it makes kind of, and it makes kind of like a meat in the end. So we've got these wrapped up. I got four wings. I got one kind of like junky wing that I'm just trying out. We're gonna throw these in the fridge for about 30 minutes at least. I want them to kind of firm up in their little, in this form. They should kind of like firm together, I'm hope, hopefully. Hopefully they're gonna do that. Okay, so our drumsticks are almost ready to get cooked. Uh, before we do that, we're gonna do like a sauce for these. Now this is just like a flavoring sauce. I'm sure you could come up with a, a bunch of different sauces. My variation is gonna be a little bit different than the recipe. Um, but it's gonna be pretty similar. So we, all we need is just some water, soy sauce. Now the recipe calls for like a dark soy sauce or a, um, like a caramel sauce. It's just like a thickening sauce, really. I don't have any of that right now, but uh, I do have some gochu, gochujang, 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 I believe is what it is. Then some maple syrup. And all we're gonna do is just whisk this together and then we're just gonna unwrap our chicken drumsticks, brush them in the sauce, let them sit in the sauce for just a minute or so, so that way it kind of like soaks in. Then all we're gonna do is preheat our air fryer or whatever like air frying convection oven that you have to about 325 degrees. Once that's preheated, we're gonna cook these for about eight minutes, flipping about halfway through and we should have some pretty epic Soy skin drumsticks. Okay, baby, yeah, what do you think? I mean, this one looks good. Yeah, that one looks, aw I mean, that just looks like smooth, you yeah. know, like it looks great. Um, they all look good. I actually don't mind the texture of the other uh, ones. That one's not even gonna pick up. Mm -hmm. So I will say that this test might be a little biased simply because I, I messed up. I can own when I mess up. To get them flat like this, like this one drumstick took me like 15 minutes to get them flat. And if I was to do 10 of these, it would have taken me like Long two, time. yeah, it would have taken me like two hours to like get through. So um, I'm actually gonna give Monica the Ooh. good one because she really enjoys the soy skin. Then I'll take one of these like funky ones. Let's dive in. Cheers. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it has some texture of like um, chicken skin, I guess, as well as the inside. Like, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take another bite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is an awesome chicken wing. Is yeah, it not see, that good? Yeah, your texture came out so much better. Mm -hmm. It's 
really good. Yeah, your texture came out and so even, much better. I know you were doing it on taste, but even the taste, like, I mean, whatever you flavor that at, like, it'll taste like chicken. I just feel like it really resembles it. But to get them, like, flat like that, Takes a while. Yeah, like after you've massaged them to like flatten them back out into ribbons. I just don't understand how they did. I'm gonna have to watch Emmy Maid's video now. Okay, so you all know that I normally don't do like reactions. I'm not gonna really show Emmy Maid's video that much because it's just, you know, this is her copyright. So yeah, she used a different soy skin than I used. It's still a fresh soy skin. Hers is just the round kind, which I've seen those before. Um, that's pretty common, like a pretty common type of soy skin. See, the way she's massaging hers is a lot different than the way that like I massaged mine. Hers is thicker. Ugh, that's frustrating. And then yeah, look at the, oh, the way that it's wrapping around the, it's so much better. Um, wow, hers came out really good looking. She said it doesn't taste like chicken. It tastes like tofu skin. <laughs> concentrated tofu. See, I didn't, I'm just gonna pause that. I didn't get concentrated tofu at all. But yeah, me and Emmy Mae had two completely different experiences with this recipe. The flavor could very much be the difference in the tofu skin, the soy skin that was used. Uh, her Yuba might have been a lot more like soy, like stronger soy flavor, where mine had a lot weaker soy flavor. Let me know what you think about these little reaction endings, because I mean, this is, this is kind of fun. I can get into this.